In this series of videos, we will explore forces and the roles they play in causing motion. For this introduction to forces, we will describe what a force is, its units, and its vector nature. We will then introduce the main contact forces, including the normal force, the force of friction, the elastic force and the tension force, buoyancy and the drag force. Finally, non-contact forces due to fields will be introduced with a focus on the Earth's gravitational force. Additional fields such as the electric and magnetic fields will be explored in later key concept videos. Forces are any influence that causes a change in an object's motion or shape, commonly defined as pushes or pulls. They are instrumental in analyzing motion. Forces are vector quantities, so they can be represented by arrows, with the length of the arrow representing the magnitude of the force and the direction of the force demonstrated by the arrow head. The SI unit of force is the newton, which is a derived unit equal to a kilogram meter per second squared. Because forces are vectors, when multiple forces act on the same object, they can be added either through the vector operation of head-to-tail vector addition or by taking horizontal and vertical components of the vector. Often many forces are acting on an object simultaneously and they will need to be added to find the net force or components taken to determine the motion of the object. There are many contact forces that can act between objects, including the normal force, the friction force, the force of tension, the elastic restoring force, the buoyancy force, and the drag force. Each of these forces will have their own formulas and rules for the direction of the force, so let's examine them individually. The normal force is the force that occurs when two objects come in contact with each other. It is the force acting on an object due to the surface that it is in contact with and is perpendicular to the surface at all times. For example, if a ladder is leaning on a wall, there will be two normal forces acting on the ladder, one due to the ladder's contact with the floor and a second due to the ladder's contact with the wall. There is no formula to calculate the normal force. It must be found by analyzing other forces in the scenario to find the amount of force that pushes the surfaces together. For example, if an object is sitting on level ground, a normal force equal to the force of gravity will act upwards on the object. If there's an additional downward force acting on the object, then the normal force will increase. If there's an additional upward force acting on the object, such as the tension from a rope, the vertical component of this applied force will cause the normal force to decrease. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. This is especially important to note if the object is on an inclined plane. The normal force will be perpendicular to the surface of the plane, and if there are no other forces acting into the plane, it will be equal to the component of the force of gravity into the plane. This is equal to the force of gravity times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle that the plane makes with the horizontal. Friction is a force that occurs parallel to the plane of contact when two objects attempt to slide across each other, opposing the motion. It is a result of the surface imperfections in electrostatic interactions between the atoms of the two objects trying to slide across each other. As a result, the friction force will oppose the motion. The normal force is causing the two surfaces to be pressed against each other, and the strength of the normal force affects how strongly the microscopic surface imperfections catch and pull against each other. When an object is at rest on a surface and a force is applied parallel to the surface of contact, a friction force prevents the object from moving. This is the static friction force. It will equal the applied force until it reaches a maximum value. The formula for the force of static friction is that the force of static friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Once the applied force becomes larger than the maximum static friction force for the two surfaces, the object will begin to move, and the friction force will decrease as it becomes the dynamic force of friction. The dynamic force of friction is always lower than the static force of friction and equals the coefficient of dynamic friction times the normal force. The coefficient of friction is a dimensionless ratio of the friction force to the normal force and is dependent on the surfaces interacting. A high coefficient will result in higher forces of friction between the surfaces. 
Each combination of surfaces will have its own coefficients of static and dynamic friction, where the dynamic coefficient is always smaller than the static coefficient. Tension is a force applied by a rope or a string. The tension force always follows the direction that the rope is pulling. There will be an equal and opposite tension force acting on the other end of the rope. This will be discussed in more detail in the Newton's Third Law video. Elastic materials such as springs exert restoring forces when they are compressed or extended from their equilibrium positions. These forces are directly proportional in magnitude to the displacement from the equilibrium, but in the opposite direction. This relationship is described by Hooke's Law, where a spring force is equal to the spring constant k times the change in length of the spring. A negative sign in the formula shows the direction of the force being opposite to the change in length. On a graph of spring force as a function of displacement from the equilibrium, the slope of the line is negative and has a magnitude of the spring constant k, which will have units of newtons per meter. Springs that are more difficult to stretch will have larger spring constants. Buoyancy and drag forces are created when an object interacts with a fluid. These forces are discussed in more depth in the fluid forces video. An object in a liquid or gas will experience an upwards buoyancy force. Archimedes' principle states that the buoyancy force acting on an object is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. The buoyancy force is equal to the density of the fluid times the displaced volume times the gravitational field strength, lowercase g. The drag force is a force that occurs when an object is moving through a fluid. The collisions between the particles in the fluid create a force in the direction opposite to the motion of the object. If the object is spherical with a small radius, Stokes' law can be used to find the drag force. The drag force is equal to 6 times pi times the viscosity of the fluid times the radius of the object times the velocity of the object. The force of gravity is an attractive force that acts between all masses. Masses create regions in space called gravitational fields, in which another mass will experience an attractive gravitational force. These concepts are covered in depth in this series of videos on fields. The force of gravity acting on an object in another object's gravitational field is equal to the mass of the object times the gravitational field strength, lowercase g, at that point in the field. Close to the surface of the Earth, the Earth's gravitational field strength is assumed to be a constant 9.8 newtons per kilogram. This value will decrease as the distance from the Earth increases, and other planets and moons will have different values of g at their surfaces. Additional fields, such as electric and magnetic fields, are explored in the Topic D videos. In summary, forces are vectors with the units of the newton. Key forces that can act on objects affecting their motion include the normal force, a force that occurs when an object is in contact with the surface. The normal force is perpendicular to the surface, and its magnitude will depend on the other forces acting. The tension force is a force that is applied through a non-elastic rope. Tension will always be in the same direction as the rope is being pulled. The elastic restoring force occurs when an elastic object, such as a spring, is compressed or extended. The spring will exert a force that is proportional to, but in the opposite direction of its change of length. Hooke's law describes this relationship. The friction force occurs when two objects slide or attempt to slide across each other. The friction force will oppose the motion of the object. There are two types of friction, dynamic, which occurs when the two surfaces are moving, and static, which occurs when the forces acting parallel to the surfaces are not large enough to create motion. The coefficient of friction is a dimensionless value that describes the two surfaces' ability to slide across each other. When an object is in a fluid, the buoyancy force will act on it. This is an upward force that is equal to the weight of the volume of fluid displaced by the object. The drag force is a force that acts on an object that is moving through a fluid. The drag force opposes the motion of the object, and Stokes' law describes the relationship. The gravitational force acting on an object due to the Earth's gravitational field is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the gravitational field strength, g. This force will point towards the Earth. For how these forces combine to contribute to an object's motion, please continue to watch the videos in the Forces series. Thanks for watching.